In this video, you will learn how I install and configure my Ansible controller node on Alma Linux 9. Anytime you are installing new software, it is a good idea to ensure your operating system is up to date. Let's start with that task first. A reboot is a good idea if you have many updates. Especially if there's a kernel update. There are two ways Ansible packages are distributed. Ansible Core, which is a minimal package that only includes the core packages. And Ansible, which adds a community curated set of Ansible collections in addition to Ansible Core for automating a wide variety of devices. The package that I'm going to install is the Ansible package, not the Ansible Core. Also, I'm not going to use a package manager like yum or dnf, rather, I'm going to install Ansible using pip the package manager for Python. This way, I'm always going to install the latest version of Ansible. Just keep in mind that the procedure that I'm going to do will install Ansible system-wide. First, I'm going to change as root user. Then I'm going to download the script that I will use to install pip. Now I'm going to run the script. And this command will install Ansible. Now let's check. As you can see, the package Ansible and version 6.5 have been installed. I'm going to log out now as root user. Next, I will generate a new SSH key specifically for Ansible use. This way I have more control on my SSH keys. Now I'm going to copy my public keys to my servers. Now, I will create the Ansible directory structure. First, I'll create my main Ansible directory. Then I'll create different inventories for production, staging, and test environments. Also, I'll create different directories for playbooks and roles. This makes it organized and easy to reuse the code. If I need to deploy in a production environment, I only need to use the production inventory file. This way, I can assure that what was deployed in each environment is exactly the same. For this video, I'll just create the host file for the test environment. As you can see, I'll have web1.lazy.test for the group web servers and db1.lazy.test for the group the servers. Now I save and exit. Next, I'll create the Ansible configuration file. I recommend creating your own Ansible configuration file and not relying on the global default Ansible configuration file. This way, I have total control over the configuration file, especially if the Ansible controller server is shared with my fellow administrators. I am creating my own Ansible configuration file by using this command. Now, I modify the configuration file and change the following parameters. Roles underscore path contains the path to the default roles directory, where the Ansible playbook should look for additional roles. I will change this to my Ansible roles directory that I created earlier. I will also set the Python interpreter to silent, so it won't output any warning if it doesn't discover any suitable Python interpreter on the node. I will also set the SSH key file to avoid respecifying the private key every time I need to execute a playbook or an ad hoc task. I will point this to the SSH key that I generated earlier. It is possible that the client nodes get reinstalled multiple times, which can cause Ansible to throw a warning at the time of initiating the connection. Disabling host underscore key underscore checking will make Ansible ignore the error messages related to the known underscore hosts keys. And then, let's save and exit. Now it's time to test the connection. I can use the ping module to test the connection. It should respond with message pong. Now I'm good to go to create my first role. I should create the role inside the roles directory. I always use the Ansible Galaxy init command to create an Ansible role directory structure. For the first role, I'll create update underscore system. Then I create the tasks. 
The main.yml tasks that will have a condition based on the Linux distribution and have it run another task that is applicable to the distribution. As of the moment, I am running Red Hat and Ubuntu based distributions on my servers. So I'll create another task for Red Hat that will use the DNF module to update the packages. And another task for Ubuntu that will use the app module. After I created the Ansible role structure, I need a playbook file which will deploy the role to my hosts. I will create my playbook file update underscore system dot yml under playbooks slash updates directory that I just created. File names are not particularly important as far as Ansible is concerned. You should, of course, use descriptive file names. As you see I have only provided the roles information and no other tasks are specified in the playbook file. After I created Ansible role from scratch and playbook file, I will next deploy to execute the update underscore system role on my servers. But before running the playbook, let's install the tree package and I'll show my directory structure. Drop me your feedback and comments below. If this video helped you in any way, please like share and subscribe. Running a playbook is rather easy using Ansible playbook command, and then specify the inventory file with the I option, followed by the path to the playbook. Since my account is not configured to sudo without a password, I need to specify the hyphen K option to prompt me with my password to allow me to sudo. After executing the command, all I have to do is wait for my playbook to finish. Automation using a tool like Ansible is very powerful. With Ansible's help, you can update all of your Ubuntu and Red Hat based servers quickly. Now that I have my servers patched, I can create my other Ansible roles to help me install and configure software to my servers.